Imagine waking up tomorrow, cup of coffee in your hand, and you turn on the news, and you see that your state will now be covering 45% of the costs associated with you buying your first home. What? It kind of sounds too good to be true, but this might be a reality for first time home buyers in California very soon. Democratic legislators in California have proposed the California Dream for All program. And now at this time, this is just a proposition. There's nothing that you can take advantage of right now. But if put into law, the state and federal funds available for California first time home buyers would cover up to 45% of the costs associated with your home purchase, which has to be pretty much one of the largest assistance programs we've seen yet to date. Of course, for a program like this to work, there has to be certain criteria that home buyers have to meet. The first is that you would have to be a first time home buyer. Now remember, this is defined as anyone who has never bought a home before or anyone who has not owned a home or had a deed in their name for the past three years. Buyers will have to meet certain income requirements. Now there was not anything specifically stated up until this point as to what those would be. The third thing is home price. Now, once again, there hasn't been anything specifically stated that home buyers cannot buy anything, maybe more than a $600,000 home. We don't know that yet. But what they have said is that home price would differ based on area. So how other assistance programs have handled this is they want to put limiting factors on the home price so that you cannot go and buy the most expensive, you know, multi-million dollar property in the area. They usually set pretty fair pricing guidelines to where you can, you know, go up to kind of the price point to an afford an average sized home for the area you're looking at. From the information we have been given so far, the last eligibility that you would have to meet is the house that you are trying to buy would have to be your primary residence. I'm not gonna lie, when I was reading through the press releases and news articles on this, I was confused. According to the proposal, the catalyst for this whole fund will be state and federal funds. Legislators are saying that they will make a one-time investment using both the state and federal funds into the California Dream Fund. Once the fund has money, they will partner up with first-time home buyers that meet the eligibility criteria that we talked about. The Dream Fund will help you as a first-time home buyer buy your house by covering 45% of the associated costs. When I was reading about this, I immediately thought about Shark Tank. If you've seen the TV show, you know that like small businesses will go and they'll pitch their business idea or their existing business to a bunch of sharks who are investors who can give them money for a equity stake in their company. That's exactly the vibe I'm getting from this California Dream Fund. I'm walking in as a first time home buyer going, hi sharks, my name is Nicole Nark and today I am seeking $220,000 for a 45% stake of equity in my home so that I can buy it. Very similar concept here. If you partner with them, you will still be the majority owner. So decisions about the house all fall on you. Additionally, taxes, insurance, and any maintenance is 100% on you, even though you're not a 100% owner. So let's say that you are buying a $400,000 house. That would mean if this is the total purchase price, that $180,000, 45% of that, would be covered by the fund. So you as the first time home buyer would only be responsible for getting a loan for the $220,000. Now, taxes and insurance will be figured on the total purchase price of the house and that is something that you are still responsible for. The fund is not going to help you take care of these. So that is something to take into consideration. Now, although that may be seen as a negative, the cool thing about this program, in my opinion, is that at any time you can buy out the funds portion of your home or you can still sell and move up. So let's say that your $400,000 home appreciates in value 
And now over time, it's worth $500,000. In this home originally, you had $220,000. Now, regardless of the payments that you've made and the equity that you've built up, if your total home has appreciated now for 500,000 and you are getting ready to sell it, you would only be selling and able to cash out your portion of your ownership in the house, not the funds. But the cool thing is that now your $220,000 would be $275,000. So you can still sell. It's not like you have to cash out the fund before you're able to sell your house. So this is a great way to kind of use the funds assistance, grow your own equity, let your home value appreciate and move up into something else. So at this point, you may be thinking to yourself, Nicole, this seems great and all, but I thought you said that this would just be a small investment from state and federal funds. So if they are lending out through the Dream Fund, all of this money, won't this dry up? Well, the legislators have already thought about a solution for that. They are saying that what they will do then is they will add up all of the real estate that the fund has helped people buy and their equity share in the real estate. And then they will divide that up and sell shares of the fund to these individual little happy investors here. They're saying that this would be a great way to offer people who are across the globe the ability to invest in California real estate without competing with California first time home buyers. Let me know what you think of that in the comments. I don't know. It's, it's a lot to take in because it is a very radical approach and very different from anything else that we've ever seen. The incentive here for investors is that they would be able to buy and sell their shares of the fund tax-free on the state level. And California legislators are appealing to have this be tax-free on the federal level as well. Now that more money has come in from investors, the fund will be able to partner with future home buyers and the cycle will continue. So the first perk that California legislators are saying would be a big one is that the state and federal funds would be a small investment. So this is not something, as long as it goes according to their plan, that would be a long-term reoccurring investment on the state level. It would just be a one-time investment and then it continues to be fueled by these investors. So that could be good for the long-term health of this California budget as well as taxpayers' dollars. Additionally, this is providing an opportunity to bring the cost of housing and home ownership down for first-time home buyers in California. Of course, this is a crazy market. It always has been. And with recent appreciation of homes nationwide, home prices, especially here, have gone through the roof. Now, of course, with this plan, there are big concerns. What is stopping California sellers from just increasing their home price by the amount that the Dream Fund would cover, therefore further increasing home values even more? That's a real concern. And I think that if this is something that gets passed, there would need to be some additional legislation to protect the real estate market in California from that happening. As a first time home buyer, you also may have concerns of what does it mean to let someone else or another entity have ownership in your home. Just think about that for a second and let me know in the comments below, how would you feel knowing that your home is potentially 45% owned by the state government or, or someone else entirely? Over the long term as well, it's hard to say how this will exactly affect the loan process and how sellers will see this program. If a first time home buyer partners up with the Dream Fund, will that be something that has to be disclosed? And will a seller be less incentivized to take a offer from a home buyer using the fund versus a home buyer who's just using a normal conventional loan on their own? These are all things that we don't know at this point, but they're things to just think about as a radical plan like this is proposed. And if passed, we could see in other states as well. In my opinion, this is an interesting step 
towards governments helping first time home buyers combat the affordability crisis. And I'd be interested to hear what you guys have to say. Share this video with anyone you know who either already lives in California and is considering buying a house or anyone buying a home period. So make sure to check out this video over here and I will see you in the next video.